is uh, my privilege to uh, welcome Brother Keith Mosier, Sr., who is our Dean of Academics and Student Life, and he is now going to uh, proceed with the remainder of the program. I want to take just a moment to comment on something that I realize more and more each day now, and that's what a great privilege it is for me to be able to be in classes with the greatest people on the face of the earth and to hear their, one of their fathers now, who was one of my students, Jesus, when were you here? Uh, I can't hear him, so it was a long time ago. 2015. 2015, and now his son is graduating tonight. And I think about Gregory Dismuke, whom I saw a while ago, and his son Anthony graduating. And that sounds like I've been here a long time, but that's not my point. My point is what a privilege it's been. And I'm grateful to the elders for allowing me to do this, to Brother BJ for his great leadership to all of my fellow faculty members who encouraged me and helped me get out of that seat so I can crawl up here tonight and do this. If you look at Acts 13 with me for a moment, we'll give you the authority for what we're about to do. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas, and Simeon called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Anion who grew up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. And as they ministered and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Listen to the last part now, this is verse 3. And when they had prayed and fasted and laid their hands on them, they sent them on their way. In just a few moments, the elders of the Forest Hill Church of Christ will shake the hands of each graduate. But I want to say to them to leave here tonight with a passage that Brother Barry brought to our attention just a moment ago. I charge thee. Now, when you're taken into heaven and you're charged with something, take it seriously. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul went right into heaven with this, preachers. Who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in kingdom? Cataruks the world. Don't change it. Herald it. The instant in season, out of season. It's an urgent thing to do here. Don't ever give up the urgency. Every time we get into the pulpit, we have a time of telling people how to get to heaven. That's urgent. So be urgent in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. Don't quit. Don't give up. And teaching, that's your job. Sometimes these students ask me what they can do about a certain situation. I said, we are not policemen. The only thing we can do is teach. And that's our job. We teach, and then we keep on teaching. And we, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own selves shall they heap themselves teachers, having itching ears, shall turn away their ears from the truth and be turned unto fables. Listen to him now. But watch thou in all things. You have to be alert, preachers. Endure afflictions. Billy and I know about those things, and all of us do. Every man on this faculty has, played, has gone over through or around some obstacle in his preaching life. Endure afflictions. Do the work. <laughs> There's that four-letter word you fellows don't like. Do the work of an evangelist. That computer doesn't need baptizing. Make full proof of thy ministry. Brother Clark, as we come to the close of our 55th year of training preachers since 1966, and 55th year of conducting a school for gospel preachers. Upon recommendation of the faculty, it is my good pleasure this evening to present to you the graduating class of 2021.
Gentlemen, for the last two years, every day in chapel, you have sung, the Lord has said, go preach the word to all the world. And that is the responsibility of each one of us to preach the gospel to the whole world. That responsibility has been given to the church, and this church at Forest Hill has taken that responsibility seriously. And when the church was at Knight Arnold, it took it seriously, and for all these years, it's been preparing men to that end. And we rejoice that not just the Forest Hill Church represented here tonight, but so many churches represented here tonight have contributed to this work. So many individuals have contributed to these students so that they could get the assistance they needed while they're at Memphis School of Preaching to prepare themselves to preach the saving gospel of Christ. It was a very, very joyous occasion when the church at Antioch sent forth Paul and Silas on their first missionary tour. It's not any less wonderful today when we get ready to send forth gospel preachers from this place. And it's with great joy that we, we see more men along with their wives, some of them who have wives, noble wives, will go into fields that are indeed white unto harvest. And therefore, by the authority that's been privileged, invested in me as director of this school, by the elders of the Forest Hill Church of Christ, and upon the recommendation of the faculty, it's, it's my good pleasure to award these diplomas to these men who spent two years in concentrated, intensive, accelerated study preparing for the greatest work on earth, preaching the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. These diplomas are equal in time and effort to what's more than a Bachelor of Arts degree from any liberal arts college. And Brother Keith Mosier, the Dean of Academics, is going to call the graduates to receive their diplomas. You will have an opportunity to congratulate them after we conclude our protocol here is to have no applause or verbal acknowledgement during the program, but we certainly do look forward to you celebrating with them after the service is concluded. We are extremely blessed at Forest Hill to have seven qualified, wonderful shepherds. Brother Danny Braddock, would you come up please? Brother Tony Callahan, Brother Warren Davenport, Brother Greg Mangrum, Brother Harold Mangrum, the fellow with the best first name, Brother Keith McAllister, <laughs> and last but not least, my ray of sunshine, Brother Eddie Ray. Will the first row rise, please? Looking at him now, you'll never believe I held him on my lap when he was a very little boy. And he lived in Higginsville, Missouri, but I think he was at a meeting in Trenton, Missouri with his parents. They took a picture, and one of the first things that this graduate showed me was a picture of my holding him on his lap. I told him that day had ended. <laughs> this is Stephen Calvin Barrett, and Brother Barrett came to us, as I said, from Higginsville, Missouri. He's going back to the Chipman Road Church of Christ in Lee Summit, Missouri. He's also going to go to Freed Hardeman virtually. I really hate to see this man graduate. I'm going to lose my free lunches. But he's not the one that buys them for me. His dad does. And his dad was one of my students. This is Daniel Cole Bennett. Daniel is from Memphis, Tennessee. He's going to also Freed Hardeman to further his education at the Wharton School of Business. And young ladies, he's single. Or he was before I made that announcement, anyway. At the Memphis School of Preaching, you can start in November or January 
or June or August. This young man started in November, which is a very difficult time to do so. He misses quite a bit of the introductory work. This is Zoran S. Born. He will graduate officially in November, and he is from Hampton, Virginia, and Zoran, whom I call Jason, of course, because he brought the born identity to the school, <laughs> will also further his education at Freed Hardeman University. How old are you really? He says he's 21. Doesn't he look like he's 14 to you? <laughs> this is Troy Buchanan, Troy Lee Buchanan. He's from Romance, Arkansas, young ladies. And he's going to be pre preaching in Valonia, Arkansas, at the Mars Hill Church of Christ. Imagine that. He's going to the Areopagus. <laughs> we haven't had enough classes for this next graduate. He went through our MOST program. That's three years. Then he took the mission program. That's a year. Now he's graduating from the two-year program. We can't get rid of him. This is Roger W. Chambers, whose wife is Mitzi. They have two grandchildren, Nia and Layla. Roger does mission work in Malawi. In fact, he will leave on June, July 8th for another trip to Malawi, Africa. He also preaches for the Cortland Church of Christ, Cortland, Mississippi. His overseeing congregation is Graves Road Church of Christ. We're one of our graduates. Sammy preaches, and so he is well connected, Brother Chambers is. You have to be careful with him, though he's a practical joker. The other day in class, he told all the students it was Brother Bland's birthday, and should they sing happy birthday to him? It wasn't anywhere near his birthday. <laughs> Michael J. Dale is from Phoenix, Arizona. He's going back to Topeka, Kansas. Michael and his wife, Jessica, have three children, Allison, Brendan, and Christian. This couple suffered COVID while they were with us, but they have recovered and done very well afterwards. When I saw his father tonight, I knew that had to be his dad. They're almost twins. You look so much alike. His hair's not quite as dark, but then. What are you doing here again? <laughs> Zachary Diallo is graduating tonight from our missions program. He is a great fellow because he's a Yankee. He's from Middleton, Ohio. And I love Yankees, Brother Liddell. Yes, sir. Got a fellow Yankee. Well, <laughs> I know you were a coal miner in Alabama, but your brother Diallo is going back to Middleton, Ohio, to the Middleton Church of Christ. And he's single. Just thought I'd pass that on in case any. <laughs> you ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. This guy's name is Anthony. Anthony, happy birthday to you. He threatened me that if I didn't do that, he wouldn't come forward. <laughs> Anthony Lamont Dismuke is from Hampton, Virginia. His father, Gregory, is a graduate. He's the preacher now for the De Gaulle Road Church of Christ in New Orleans, Louisiana, and he's getting married in just a few weeks. This part of the ceremony tonight is very sad. Our next graduate isn't here at the moment. Jonathan J. Exum actually gets his work done in January. He's from Sparks, Georgia. His mother died this morning. So please keep Jonathan in your prayers. She struggled for some time now with cancer. 
At the present time, Jonathan is preaching for the Halls Church of Christ in Halls, Tennessee, but he is presently going to be looking for a place when he leaves school. Keep Jonathan Exum in your prayers, please. Brother Clark, I don't think we should let this guy graduate. What do you think of a student when you have a really bad back, Jerry, and he takes your chair and puts it way down so that when you sit in it, it hurts? He did apologize, though, because he didn't know I would hurt. This is Chandler W. Francis. He's from Blue Springs, Missouri, and he'll be preaching for the Meadowbrook Road Church of Christ in Asheboro, North Carolina. It's quite a ways from where his home is. In fact, he broke that chair. <laughs> Will the second row rise, please? Albert Dean Hadlock came to us from Davis City, Iowa. He will be preaching there at the Davis City Church of Christ in Davis City, Iowa. He and his son Tristan are a great joy to be around. I told Tristan today, he's now 10, that he would have to come here in eight more years. You really think we should let him graduate? This guy never pronounced one English word correctly the whole time he was here, <laughs> and they're going to let him graduate? David Jimenez, who doesn't even know how to pronounce his last name, is from Monterey, Mexico. And he will be preaching, or working, excuse me, with the San Carlos Church of Christ in Monterey, Mexico. His father is the one who led us in the closing prayer, who is the director of the Monterey School of Preaching. Our speaker tonight was Barry Kennedy. This is his son, Joshua Kennedy who's from Tupelo, Mississippi, and every place else his father was, Crossville and other places. He will be preaching for the, or working with, and preaching for the church at Pine Street in Crossit, Arkansas. He's going to be working with one of our graduates, Brother Jerry, while he's there. William Ames Rourke came to us after the encouragement of Nathan Franson out of Sacramento, California. He and his wife, William's wife, uh, will be working with the church in Benton, Arkansas, Highway Church of Christ. Here's another graduate who never pronounced a word correctly the whole time he was here. This is Jake's small, Rodnick Small from St. Catherine, Jamaica. Jake's and his wife, my Dean, have one child, Jacob. Jake's will be wor working with the Barnes Penn Church of Christ in St. Catherine, Jamaica. Brother Clark, would it be all right to have a two-week vacation just to go down there? I don't know. Dennis Harlan Smith. What's your wife's name, Dennis? What is it? What's your wife's name? What's your wife's name? Liberty. Did you hear that? Liberty. Say it louder. Liberty. Uh, we can't get him to speak. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis and Liberty. Dennis came to us from Greece Ferry, Greer's Ferry, Arkansas. He's going to further his education to Arkansas Tech while he's living in Searcy.
When this man came, I told him his name meant something because in the Bible it says the Sparks fly upward. This is Mitchell J. Sparks. He's from Munford, Alabama, but we don't hold that against him. He and his wife have four daughters, Morgan, Madra, Meredith, and Miley, or Miley, Miley. All of his sons are daughters. He's working in Arkansas, however, at the Bay City Church of Christ, Bay Church of Christ in Bay, Arkansas. Mitchell, did you start there already? And they still kept you? I've been through the line so much. This is Cannon Taylor, who is graduating tonight from the missions program. Cannon is from Yorktown, Indiana, but he's preaching for the Lepanto Church of Christ in Lepanto, Arkansas. Well, if you don't want it. <laughs> Did you sign up your, for the two-year program yet? Did you? Not to put you on the spot or anything. <laughs> this is Dean Presley Thompson, just graduating tonight from the MOST program. That's 72 hours, folks. Pineville, North Carolina native. He labors with the University Church of Christ. You can read or see his blog called Truly Anchored on your internet. That's Dean Presley Thompson. This guy's bulletin article is going to read, Win with Win. This is Andrew Wynn, a former military officer. He and his wife, Nicole, came to us from Montgomery, Alabama. They have three children, Macy, Leela, and Chelsea. And he'll be preaching with the Smithville Church of Christ in Smithville, Mississippi. Couldn't leave the South, huh, Andrew? He didn't listen to me in class either, you know. So. <laughs> this is my, my favorite right here. Simply because he never said a word the whole two years he was here. <laughs> this is Garrett Thomas Young. Garrett is from Auburn, Alabama. He and his wife Jessica have two daughters, Riley Ann and Madison. And Garrett is already preaching for and will be preaching for the Cottondale Church of Christ in Cottondale, Alabama. Thank you, Brother Mosier, and uh, now to come and give an expression of gratitude on behalf of the class to this congregation, Brother Garrett Young. It's already been seen from those who have spoken tonight how much this school and this congregation means. To so many people we've been blessed for two years to be able to be here to learn under these men but it's only possible because of the congregation here and we appreciate your dedication to fulfilling the great commission that we've been charged with and we appreciate the strong stance for the truth led by the elders and we appreciate the fact that what we learn and what we're taught in school isn't just the theory that sounds nice, but we can come over here after school on Wednesdays and Sundays and see what an active church, a church that loves Jesus and wants to do what the Word of God says to do. And so on behalf of the class, I would just like to say thank you to this congregation. Everything that this class goes out and does, you will have been a part of that, and you will continue to be a part of that, and you will always be family to us. So we appreciate you, and thank you.
We always have some uh, specific awards that we like to give out at graduation. Brother Bobby Liddell is going to give those out. He is administrative dean of, of the school and does a fabulous, fabulous job in that department, in that role. He's done a fabulous job in every role he's had at the school, instructor, dean of admissions, director, and uh, talking me into becoming director, <laughs> and uh, then uh, <laughs> promising me he would help me, and he has, and certainly uh, appreciate the good work that he does and overseeing the work of the school's finances. Administrative Dean Brother Bobby Liddell will now come and give out some specific student awards. Thank you, Brother Clark. You're very kind in your introduction. And I appreciate the opportunity to take part in the program, and especially in this part of the program, which is giving certain awards. I was thinking as my wife and I like to watch the Westminster Kennel Club Championships, there might be 27 beagles in that, in that group of dogs, but there's one that is chosen, that stands out above the others. They're all great. They're all champions in their right. And so as we extend these awards, we realize that uh, there are some who've been outstanding. They stand out in one way or another. But they're all great. The first of these is the Attendance Award. We meet five days a week from 8.30 to 4. We do have an hour for lunch. In summer school, we meet from 7 to 1, no lunch, until after 1. And the students are expected to be there, as well as to attend other activities, lectures, seminars, other church activities, and school activities. And the reality of life is that students sometimes face illness. They have the inevitable interruptions that come with life. There are times that there are important activities in the family that need their attention. And so they, they face the reality of life just as we do. They get tired. They miss a lot of sleep. You tell them when they graduate, then they can sleep. But the point is that it would be easy, the temptation would be there, and it would be easy for them to say, well, I just need to take this day off. I just need to stay home and rest. I need to sleep today. It's been a long, long and uh, grueling type of, of study. I just need some. But commitment prevails. And so the man who has been the one who is outstanding as far as attendance and receives the best attendance award is Joshua Kennedy. I asked if he had missed any days. He said he didn't think he did. I don't think he did either. The academic award is based upon the best grade point average. Do you remember what that was? 3.92. That's pretty good. The school that was proclaimed by the Memphis Commercial Appeal as the toughest school in town will test the best of us to our limits. If a person makes an A in a class, that is impressive here at the Memphis School of Preaching because an A is 97 to 98. If he makes an A+, plus, well, that's 99 to 100. That's perfect or almost perfect. And that is because one has ability, obviously, but also because he has a dedication, a work ethic. He has to be consistent. That means that he has to learn all the memory verses. 
He has to write all the papers, turn in all the notebooks. He has to read all the assignments. He has to pass all the tests. And so here's a man who has done this in a way that is outstanding, and no doubt others were close, as is always the case. Others may have been just right there, and, and their efforts will bring forth fruit. We trust that they will. But this is the one who is outstanding as far as his grade point average. He receives the academic award, and the recipient this year is Garrett Young. Okay. He said it made a B in Brother Mosier's class. <laughs> oh, it's a B plus. Okay. 94. That's good. All right. The True Yoke Fellow Award. When we think about a yoke fellow, that word may mean a comrade, but we think of it more as one who is bound together, yoked together with another or with others, and that in labor. Here's a man who is laboring. He is working closely with others and making possible the greater impact. And the practicality of this for us and our usage of it is that it represents the person who has been a willing, a cheerful and a productive servant. He has made himself the go-to guy when we needed help. Sometimes I would be in the secretary's office and they would say to another student, would you go find brother so-and-so? Because they knew he was the one they could depend upon above all others to come and to do the thing that they needed and to do it in the right way. Now, a person could serve because of duty, joyless duty. It's a drudgery to him, but he serves because of duty. Or he could serve because of dread. He has a fear that he might suffer because he doesn't serve. And so he serves because of that dread. It's like more bricks and no straw. It might be that a person serves being deceitful because he wants to curry favor. He has the intention of ingratiating himself and, and promoting himself. But that's not what this brother did. This brother served because he followed the humble example of our Lord and His service and he has sought simply to serve the Lord. And in serving the Lord, he served others. And so the True Yoke Fellow Award is presented to Joshua Kennedy. And the last one is the Outstanding Student Award. This represents the student graduating that we think most closely meets the standard that we would think of as the ideal student. The one who excels in every way. The kind of man that we work diligently for two years to prepare, to educate, to train, to mentor, that we might send him forth with the biblical challenging charge to preach the word. So here's a man who, while all the others are great, was chosen by the faculty to be one who was outstanding. So the Outstanding Student Award is presented to David Jimenez.
Thank you so much, Brother Liddell. Brother Barry made mention during his message about the challenge of the two-year program that these gentlemen have experienced here. And I want to uh, say something that I meant to say the night of uh, the graduation banquet. Sometimes uh, positive and encouraging things are said to me about navigating through this time period. But I want to make it uh, very crystal clear and meant to do so that night that I have not uh, done this without extensive, extensive prayer, of course, but also extensive conversations with Associate Director Billy Bland to work through some of those things together and try to plan out exactly what we should and shouldn't do. And uh, Brother Bland, as an Associate Director, is a dream to work with. He's so willing, so helpful, so wise, and uh, I'm grateful to be able to work with him. Now, not all of the faculty have participated in this program here tonight. Um, some are not in town, some are, are here, but they're seated elsewhere. I would like for all of the remaining uh, faculty uh, that might be present here tonight, if they would, to to stand where they are so that your families can see some of the men that contributed to their education while they were here. Brother Waycaster, Brother Reynolds, um, T.J. Clark, the original, my dad uh, in the back. And uh, those are just three of our other faculty members. And we're blessed to have a tremendous faculty with, if you added up all the years of local work experience that we've been privileged to have, it's over 400 years of local work experience, and so usually if our students ask a question, one of us has been there and done that and can maybe help out in that department. I know every single faculty member here and every student here would tell you that uh, were it not for this next group of ladies, um, this school would be, you know, I don't know the medic or the mechanical term for what happens when an engine gets wrecked or whatever or seizes up. Is that what they say? I think the school would seize up uh, if it weren't for these ladies keeping it going. And uh, though they will not be happy with me, Joyce, Jackie, and Annette, where are you? Are you here still? Okay. Y'all stand up for a second, please. Joyce, Jackie, and Annette. There they are. Yes. Thank you so much for what you do. And by the way, uh, so that my wife could be with me yesterday to go to the uh, funeral service for Sister Joanne Bradshaw, the secretaries volunteered to take care of the uh, graduation reception and to take that off of her mind uh, since we would be getting back uh, late last night. That's just the kind of ladies they are, and they did a tremendous job, didn't they? We really appreciate it. And on the church side of things, helping us with uh, everything that uh, we might need, uh, Krista, are you here? Uh, Krista still? Krista, okay, you have to stand too, if, you know, just for a second. Thank you, this is Krista. And they all work together very, very well. It's a wonderful team. And uh, we're so blessed to have them all here. Uh, deacons of this congregation, do we have any deacons that would stand where you are? Deacons of the congregation. They do a lot of things. I'm sure that we have some, uh, yeah, there's some, they're working. They're up in the balcony. They're doing deacon things. Uh, so we do appreciate our deacons here at this congregation as well. Our uh, <clears throat> last segment of the program is going to be uh, some songs that mean a lot to us here at the school. Valiant Soldiers of Christ Our King, or Christ the King, was written actually for the school. And then uh, Jeremy will lead us in God Bless You, Go With God, after which uh, Greg Dismuke who is a graduate of the school and the father of Anthony Dismuke, a graduate tonight. He will lead us in our benediction. 
And uh, then uh, as soon as he says amen, one of you guys just go ahead and start it. Uh, and yes, we'll sing all three verses tonight because won't it be grand to hear him say well done is even better when you think about it for not graduation, but about uh, judgment day and getting to graduate and go to heaven someday. So we're going to uh, conclude with those songs, a prayer, and then uh, we'll sing the school song at the end, and then you'll be dismissed at the end of that school song to go and congratulate everyone. Thank you so much, so much for being here tonight, and forgive me for any omissions of gratitude that I should have given. find this song in your songbook. It'll be uh, uh, glued to the back cover of the songbook if you'd like to look at it there. <laughs> As valiant soldiers of Christ our King, we must be the
Number 171. One hundred seventy one. This is my Father, for this day, we're thankful for all the blessings that we have received. We realize, dear Father, that our throne is high and lifted up, and all honor and praise and glory is due to Thee. Dear Father, we're thankful for the wonderful occasion that brings us together. We're thankful for this great institution, the Memphis School of Preaching. Thankful for the Forest Hill Irene Congregation, dear Father, and her elders that oversee the work here. We're thankful, dear Father, for Brother Clark, the director, and for every staff member, dear Father, for their dedication to train and teach gospel preachers. We pray, dear Father, that thou will be with all of the staff, be with all of the elders, dear Father, that they may continue to serve in this capacity. And we're so thankful, dear Father, for every student and for the graduating class, that thou will be with them, dear Father, protect them and guide them as they depart, dear Father, from this place and go to their respective fields, dear Father, to start their work. We just pray, dear Father, that thou will be with them, that they continue dedicated to preaching the gospel, to edifying thy people, and to increasing thy borders, dear Father, through the preaching of the gospel and saving souls. We're thankful, dear Father, for everything that thou hast done and continue to do for us in our lives. And we pray, dear Father, as we have many, dear Father, will be traveling for, to various places. We ask for traveling grace. Be with us and protect us and guide us in all that we do. Dear Father, we are mostly grateful for the greatest gift ever given, thy Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we just pray, dear Father, all things in his name. Amen. <laughs>